Hi everyone, I am here with the Bible reading. Happy Easter to all you guys. I hope you're enjoying your Easter. Layla, let me know what games you and Emil are playing for Easter. What board games you guys like. I'd like to know. We ain't done nothing today. We haven't even had dinner yet, so. We've just been watching TV. Let all of us, let's thank the Lord today and always that He gave His only Son to us. And Jesus suffered and died for our sins. And then God rose Him from the dead the third day. Jesus is in heaven alive. Alive. Thank God for that. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. That is what Easter is all about. Okay, guys, so I hope you're getting to enjoy it. Today we're going to be reading Luke chapter 10, verse 38, through chapter 11, verse 13. We'll be reading Psalm 76 and Proverbs chapter 12, verses 15 through 17. So in Luke today, we'll be um, reading about at the home of Martha and Mary. They were sisters. And it's not Mary, Jesus' mother. It's a different Mary. Jesus teaching a prayer. Jesus taught them how they should pray. Which is, a, you know, we'll see what that is soon. You don't know. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. And some woman looked in here and gave me a dirty look. I was seeing her little boy, who was probably two years old, just walked by and he was in a suit. So cute. That girl gave me an awful look, Sherm. Sherm? That woman that went by with that little boy in the suit? She looked in here and gave me an awful hateful look. Never seen her before in my life. You can, though. Okay, let's get started. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. A few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. It is the Lord's Prayer. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, 
and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. And that was where we're ending with Luke today. You know when you got the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you feel amazing. I feel amazing. So wonderful. Sometimes you can just sense that God is with you. Which he, He's always with us, but you know what I mean? Like if you're going through something, or you're scared about something, sometimes you can just feel that He's right there with you and everything will be okay. He's got your back one way or the other, you know? So now let's go to our psalm, Psalm 76. It has 12 verses. It is for the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm of Asaph, a song. Don't you wonder when it says these are songs, what they would sound like with them singing it? You know, what the tune would be that goes along with it and stuff? I would love to know. I'd love to hear it. Because the words mostly, you know, they don't rhyme or anything. So I'd love to know how they how they sung it, you know. God is reowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. It says so in the Bible, the Lord loves Zion. It talks about Zion a lot. The Lord loves Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows the shields and the swords, the weapons of war. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with gain. The valiant lie plundered, they sleep their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift his hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both horse and chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted in the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. He breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Amen, and he should be, because if he's not, God won't be on those king's side. All right, and that is Psalm 76. Now we're finishing up today's Bible reading. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 15, 16, and 17. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies and God doesn't like when people lie on each other it says so in the Bible he doesn't like it when they give false testimony against someone stuff like that he doesn't like it when we do things anything that we know we're not supposed to do you can feel it in your heart if you're about to do something whether it's going to be good or bad well, what I'm about to do hurt this person 
or someone else would hurt somebody? Or will it make them feel better? That's what you should ask yourself before you rush into anything with someone like that. Are my words going to make them feel better? Or are my words going to hurt them more? Because you don't want to hurt them. Even if they've hurt you, you still want to be good to them. And God likes that. And He gets angry if somebody pays back evil for good. If somebody does good for somebody, and then you pay them back by doing something bad to them, God does not like that. If you have somebody you know that's in need, that needs help, and they're like your worst enemy, stop and help them if you can. Show them love. Show them what a real Christian is like. You may just uh, bring that soul to Jesus. You just don't know. I know it'd be really, really hard. It'd be really hard. But if everybody just kept paying back everybody evil because they done something to them, this world would be a lot worse than it is now. Like the whole world would be bad if people did that. They done something bad to me, so I'm going to make them pay and do something bad to them. And it'll go on and on and on like that because their children will see their actions and they'll grow up to do that and, you know, on and on and on for generations. You need to teach them right, to forgive. Teach them from the Bible so they know. Because the world is not going to. The world will teach them the complete opposite. They will teach them evolution. They won't teach them about the Bible. No, they won't know nothing about God unless you tell them. Or unless someone in their life, when they're older or at a young age, they're around, you know, tells them. So, the little kids can even go to Sunday school. We went to Sunday school off and on when we were little. And I did when I was, um, in high school as well, we had a youth group. We went there, I think it was like once a week, maybe twice. I think it was once a week. And we always had, you know, a lot of fun. It was just a few of us kids in a small town where we lived. We all went to school together, and we went there together. And it was just really nice. And I remember back then I was really embarrassed because we played this one game. It was like, like baseball. Where, but you'd answer questions and then you'd move to the, the next base, you know what I'm talking about? And the questions were really hard for me because I didn't know much about the Bible at that time. I just knew, you know, the basic things, the main things, like Jesus this is the Son of God, Mary's his mother, and she was a virgin, and Joseph was her husband. You know, stuff like that. I didn't know much about the Bible at all, and I, you know, wasn't reading it then or anything. I was young, in school, and, you know, but I still praised and loved the Lord. I can't remember a time that I have not. I can remember when I was little and I was talking to God. I don't know how I, it's just like He's always been there, like I just knew. Because I can't remember anybody really saying to me anything like that, that God is with you and all that stuff. It's just amazing. But yes, you've got to start at the bottom to get to the top. Read your Bible every day or listen to it online or, you know, go to Sunday school, whatever. It'd be really nice, you know, to learn more about the Bible because when you learn more about the Bible, you learn more about God and Jesus and you grow closer to them every time you read. No matter how much you read, no matter how many years I've read the Bible to you guys online, for several years now, it's like, I always see, I always recognize something different in the words from year after year that I didn't really understand before, or I thought was something else, but it actually meant another thing. 
And that, you know, that happens all the time. That's why you need to keep your faith strong in the Lord and study study the Bible. So you're, that will keep your faith strong. And Jesus, when you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, you know, all the time and or listen to it and you pray and talk to Jesus and God all the time, Jesus will become not only your brother, he'll become your best friend. He'll become your best friend. He'll be the first person you think about when you wake up and the last person you think about when you go to sleep at night. Always put Jesus and God first. Love anything and anybody. And praise the Lord and thank the Lord that Jesus has risen from the dead today and he is alive. Happy Easter, everyone. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing, We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Sure? Sherm's in there. I love you guys. Happy Easter.